Well, are you welcome to the whiskey vault? I am dead. I'm Rex. He's level three whiskey sommelier. He's a dude drinking whiskey. I predict Moochitude is in my future. Yeah. This is a Game of Thrones whiskey. I think we're headed to that direction. This is a Game of Thrones whiskey. It is. And it's Lagavulin. Oh, well done, you. Yes. Well, I, it was my idea. No, <laughs> I'm talking about the good people at HBO for. Oh, okay. Doing the Lagavulin thing. I don't know. Do you think they actually had a? Part of the process, or they just went to Diageo and said, "Hey, choose some good ones that aren't going to embarrass us, and we'll slap a label." So, from all the people who've been reviewing this, including Scotch Test Dummies, for example, yeah. who have their own reviews of all these whiskeys, yeah, good guys, um, and and there are quite a few others. They're all going through it. This is not unique, but everyone seems to agree. All the Game of Thrones fans all seem to agree that they fucked it up yeah. in the order and selection. So they think different houses should have had yeah, different whiskeys. Yeah, right. So they but, but here's the reality. They were bound to get the reaction no matter what they chose. <laughs> right. There's always somebody. Are you ready to record? Yeah, do the thing here. Let's time is pouring Lagavulin. Where's yours? <laughs> I was waiting for that. I remember the first time you did that. It was pretty early on. Memories. The first time I tried to, like I tried to underpour you. Used to yeah. know. I used to, I tried to underpour you, and you just grabbed my glass. <laughs> and that's when I learned you underpour first, then pour your own glass. <laughs> <laughs> Not the other way around. So this is I, I'm I'm. This is by the way. What do you see right there? Uh, nine. This is the only age statement whiskey that we've done so far from oh, Game of Thrones. No, like none of the Talisker. No. The, the only one yeah. is nine years old. Okay. Yeah. So now we have a log of all an eight. We've had and there's a log. Is there a? There's a sixteen. Is there a? Yeah. There's an eight. There's an you eight. Want to try the eight. We'll try the eight. Okay. And honestly, just from the smell from the spilled whiskey, right? It smells like spent grain. Okay. And smoke on the nose. This is a little less. Springy mm -hmm. and sharp in terms of like alcohol, smoke, and earthy bitiness. Okay. Remember. This is going to feel weird, but uh, wait, wait. Pour a little into your palm, the smallest amount that you can do. There you go. Yeah, now rub them together. <laughs> okay, now smell it and look at. Wait, wait. Remember when we did the Akapon video when we smelled and tasted all the actual malt grains? Hold on. Uh, uh, you're saying words that, that I need to listen Acapon to. Brewer. I need to listen to you. Yeah. Remember when we did the Acapon? With, yes. And we actually ate some of the malt and smelled the actual malt. Yeah. That's what you're going to smell in there, but mix it with campfire smoke and brisket. Really work, work in that oxygen. That's pretty good, actually. I could never get a good fart noise from that maneuver. Yeah, yeah, your hands have to be damp for that. Oh, the sweetness is. The, yeah, that but was... look at the look for the malt. <clears throat> look yeah. for the grain. Yeah, yeah. Right, because what I did was I grabbed the the whiskey we spilled right here, and I can immediately smell the actual musty grain dust. Of so the I malt. get a burst of it's almost an oaty vanilla with caramel, like all of the uh, smoky bits. <sighs> I had to cut up my finger. <laughs> I don't only just now realized it. <laughs> just had it. Oh man, but that is dense and dark. Although I did get a minty note, even in the. It's so smoky. I get like a cinnamon. And I'm, so malt dust. I'm not getting. I'm not. Here's what's falling by the wayside for me. On the nose, uh, the big, aggressive, challenging, smoky elements are not there. They're more rounded off. No, it's all... So here's how it's there. More round, more rounded off. They're not it is. aggressive and challenging. I'm going to give you an example. I think you're going to agree. There's the smell of campfire. And then there's the smell of the next day, the jacket you were wearing at the campfire. Uh -huh. That's what it reminds me of. The second hand... It's still smoky in your. Oh. You put on your jacket, yeah, yeah. and you're like, "Oh yeah, I wore this jacket at a campfire yesterday." Yeah, yeah. It's that one removed from direct campfire. But the smell. Now that you're used to that dense, right. musty fire, the smell is actually really sweet. I see a dangerous lack of Lagavulin Eight right now. Well, hang on. Have a little eight. patience. I haven't even tasted this yet. I get a, like a more prominent caramel. And this log of Ulan that I remember from other logs. Yeah, me too. Me yeah. too. John Mack. Okay, magnificent bastards. My wife and I are having a debate about ice. 
Tell me what you think. Is it important to have for you to have a single clear cube or just whatever ice they have whenever you are out at a bar or restaurant? I always ask what ice they have before I order because it will change how or what I have. Daniel, the best whiskey is the whiskey you like to drink? Yeah, so here's what I think. There's different kinds of ice at bars. There's chipped ice, that melts really fast. Yeah. There's the cubed ice, which is in the middle, and That's uh, the iced tea and then ice. sometimes they do like just generic. Yeah, anyway, there's different things. So what I'll do is I'll order an ice water yeah. to see what kind of ice they're using. Well, maybe the bar has different specialty ice. You don't think so? Not, well, the fancy bars they do, but they crush their own depending on the drink. Right. So um, if if possible, I always order a large ice cube, mm -hmm. ball, whatever they're making for the big fancy stuff. If they don't have that, then I wait to see what kind of ice they do have. And on it, but if I'm being honest, if I'm ordering a whiskey on the rocks, I am less concerned with truly understanding the whiskey, and I just want a whiskey and something cold at the same time. Yeah, so we did That's a it. we did a bit episode on our other channel called "When, How, and Why to Add Water to Whiskey." We also did to uh, an episode. That's up here. We also did an episode called "The Best Ways to Chill a Whiskey." It's right up here. So either one of those will have more about that. Yeah, get the eight, and then get the quintessential Lagavulin tin. Uh, no. Uh, 16. No, no. I'm going to get the 8 first. Quintessential log of No, I've, I've got that firmly in my memory. Quint you have nothing. You have nothing in your memory. The quintessential log of one is less melon, a little more pepper, and ends with a mint lift. This is the 8. Oh, it's more, um... What's weird is what popped in my head is monkey shoulder. For no apparent reason. We can try that too. The weird, sour, sort of slight musty note from Monkey Shoulder. These smell nothing alike. Wow, it's so much. And that's the eight. The lightness on the eight here. Are you, did they? Yeah. Oh, they may have added some uh, E150. I don't know. Look it at the difference. Be, yeah. Look at the difference. No, it is definitely dark, or darker. They normal. may have added some color into that. But I will tell you that the eight oh. is more, way more fruity and way more malt mustiness. Malt is the word. Yeah. Yeah. It's malty. Whereas that nine has more of the characteristic Lagavulin feel. Yeah, I would say. The 8 has more of the characteristic Lagavulin feel. What? Yes. So if we're both saying the 16 is the quintessential Lagavulin. Okay, here's the thing. Are you arguing with me just... Wait, wait, stop, 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 stop. Nope. I will get it if you will answer this question. Are you dis... No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm taking all your f***ing whiskeys. You at least owe me an answer to a question. I'll answer whatever or I'll never want. pour anything from Got my a glass secret. in my hand. I'll never pour anything from my secret stash ever again. That's so dirty. So, did... Wait, I, are you disagreeing just to try to get some free whiskey, or do you legitimately think, because I need to know, do you legitimately think that the 8 is more representative? I legitimately don't remember the 16 well enough. Ah, that's bull****. I don't. Okay, so the 16, I'm telling you, the eight, that 9 from Game of Thrones is closer to the classic Lagavulin. The 8 is a little too melon, malty heavy. Maybe a little. See? I told you. You know what it is? It's because you have the better view. <laughs> <laughs> Skink Troubles. Fair enough. Skink Troubles. Oh, Any, nice. Anybody recognize this one? He's got a picture that Daniel will not send to Chad. This is on Facebook. Just didn't happen. I told the teller I like Ardbeg, so he recommended this. It's a Finlogan. Oh yeah, Finlogan. In his opinion, it's as nuanced as Ardbeg. It's not as nuanced, but it's damn close. And it was on sale for 20 euro. So, the point is, what are your thoughts on Finn Logan? Now, Finn Logan is doing independent bottlings of Isla whiskey. Okay. And they don't disclose which distillery they're getting their whiskey well, from. That sucks. Should... And it changes based on the bottle you get. Okay. So, what was his bottle? It was a Finn Logan. Uh. Old Reserve. I've got it right here. Okay. Does it have a green bottom label? Uh, it's got... It's hard to tell. It's in the... Yeah, show me that. Yeah. That'll do. Old Reserve? Yeah, that's it. We're sure that's it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's got a green box. Yeah. That's how you can tell. Okay. So, the Finlog and Old Reserve... Compared to Ardbeg. Compared to... Not compared to Ardbeg. He said Ardbeg. No, no, no. We're just comparing it to an Isla. The man said And we're going from memory. People, go to the trouble to leave comments. Just work your fingers to the bone. 
So we need to make sure. Oh, it does smell. It gets very butterscotchy. Yeah. Oh no, these are completely different whiskeys. They're not even in the same. No, he's saying not necessarily the flavors are the same. He's saying the level of nuance and complexity. Okay, so for the money, the level of nuance and complexity. Yeah, he's saying the Finn Lagen is like, oh, that was a surprise hit for me. It's as complex as. Now we are. We don't really get access to the Finn Lagens in the U.S., which I, I think is disappointing. It feels like a low proof. This is a 40% whiskey. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not buying it, man. I mean, maybe for 20 euros. No, it's a good deal for 20 euros. For 20 euros, all day. Yeah, absolutely. I'm all in. Absolutely. Great choice. But you can't reasonably compare that to the Ardbeg 10. The Ardbeg 10 is living in a different category. There's more complexity in the yeah, Ardbeg 10. Yeah, significantly. But at that price point. Now, remove well, Ardbeg from the discussion. No, yes. At and the, ask this question. At the 20 euro at price point. At 20 euro, point, is that, this complex? Oh, yeah. Yes, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I got a lot of whiskeys. <sighs> you did. I still have to do all the bookkeeping. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, May you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.